Targeting smaller marlin on spin gear is an incredibly exciting style of fishing. When good numbers of black marlin flood our coastline, there's several spots where they can be targeted close to shore. It's no secret these days, but on the world stage, Fraser Island offers a unique chance to chase these awesome sport fish in shallow water. A mate and I hit that water with a grand plan to get up there and chase a few using bait techniques. moment we're trolling an edge, a three or four metre sand ledge which drops down to 20 metres and you, there's a lot of bait here, there's a lot of current, prime place to find a marlin when they're in the area and so far I, our eyes are showing us that it's, it's paying off because we've seen the odd marlin, seen a few free jumpers, we've obviously come across a few coming up in the spread as well. Now first part of our little plan is our string of teasers, we're positioning that six metres behind the boat. Just keeping it flipping away in the wash. In our short corner, obviously fishing for a smaller class of fish, so we're using light spin gear. Two metres behind the teasers, I've got one gar swimming away. So the idea being that if any fish comes up on that teaser, not far away, it's gonna find a bait. On the other side of the boat, what we've got is a bait sitting a lot further behind the boat, a good 15 to 30 metres. Pick off those fish which either wanna come in and inspect the boat, or the ones which wanna sit further back in the wash. The other rod which is sitting here out of action at the moment is our live bait rod. And what we've got, same class of spin outfit, braid, 80 pound leader, and it's attached to a live bait sitting on a circle hook. The idea being that if a fish comes up in the spread and it doesn't want to touch our gars that are trolling around the teaser and out the back of the boat, we can pitch that live bait into it and hopefully cover all those bases that a fish might want all in all, it's a very effective strategy. If you do want to go out there and catch your first marlin, you could do a lot worse than get out there and troll a couple of gars and have a live bait ready to pitch into the action should a marlin come up. It's got away from the show up now. <laughs> <laughs> Righto. Game on. Thank you, up bit. Yep. Works one out. Hard work, there you go. Bit of teamwork. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, oh, he dropped it. You oh. Dear oh dear. Ah. <laughs> that's pretty exciting stuff. Oh mate, I'm, I'm in love. The way I've rigged this, we're not fishing super heavy gear, which means I want a re relatively fine gauge circle hook, and that's a Mustad 3.0. And to rig it up, with the use of a needle and some Dacron, on this case, 50 pound braid, thread that braid just through the top of the eye of the fish, through either side, and then by pinning that hook through the braid, spinning it around, going through a couple of times, you can rig that bait up, ready to go. The idea being that, throw it into the fish, free spool it out, and you'll feel, the, you'll feel the fish pick up that bait and start running with it. We're also using visible braid, which means we can see that line speed pick up when the fish has got it. Because it's a circle hook, what you want to do then is never ever strike a fish. The idea behind a circle hook is that they don't damage fish and they generate lip hooks. What that means is that as you build up the weight on that fish, it'll slowly pull that hook out to the point where it gets to a lip, some form of ledge, and then circle hooks are designed to, to dig in and hopefully get a firm hold. They don't damage the fish and they do promote better hookups. It's an ideal way to complement the approach of trolling your gars. Circle hook, live bait, no matter what the marlin want to throw at us, there's a fair chance we're going to have some fun. We can hook them, we might not always land them. This one is a bit dark at the moment. <laughs> we're trying to keep away from them in the boat. <laughs> on it. Tease him up. Where is he? Yeah, he's, oh. on. he's on it. There's two of them in there. He's on the live. He's on the live. Yeah, he's got the live. He's got it. He's got it. You're right. Swanner. Yep. Okay. 
He's got the hook in him, mate. You get, you get. In the wind. Go, 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 go. Oh, nice catch. Let him go, let him go, man. You got him hooked, you got him hooked. Hook. Let him go, let him go. I'll talk you through the way we set up our trolling rig for these gars. And to start with, we're using Mustad, what you'll, you'll hear the term J-style hooks. It's not a circle hook, set up, obviously like the J. This is the Mustad 34007. Other hooks you can use, things like your mustard tarpons and 7Os. Just pick a hook that matches the size of the bait. And at the moment, I'm trolling gars about that size. The idea being, I want to rig this hook up to sit down underneath the chin of this bait, add some weight to it so it swims, and trying to attract a marlin. First step of the equation, get your leader, rig a crimp onto your leader, through the eye of your hook, and then back out through the crimp. The trick being here to leave yourself a good amount of tag in, because that's what we're going to use to rig some sinkers and give this, this, this bait its chin weight. Now, to keep the bait attached, we've also got to put a little bit of wire into the equation, something to pin the nose of that gar to. Get your crimping pliers before we rig it. Give it a little turn, provide a little L shape, and then simply insert that into your crimp. And what we're gonna do now is tighten that crimp, and then I'll show you the next step. Keeping that all together, Takes a little bit of coordination. We then want to get our crimping pliers and crimp all that together. You'll notice when I'm crimping this, I've got my crimping pliers in the middle of that crimp. A mistake sometimes people make is to crimp too close to the edge of your crimp and you effectively cut your line or, or, or weaken its integrity. So you want to get in the middle of that crimp and there's the first step. Now what we want to do is start applying the weight to the nose of this garn. To do that, this is what my tag end was left for. I want to thread that 80 pound leader through my sinker. And now rather than tie a knot in this, to keep it in the right spot, use of a lighter and simply bulb up. Just keep going with that flame until you get a knot, a, a soft molten knot within your, your leader and get it all the way up to the edge of your sinker. Nearly there. Having a few wind issues. Bit of saliva, get it together. And there you have it. We've got that molten knot, put a bit of cold water on it. It'll harden up very quickly. And that will then keep the sinker in place, situated in the nose of where that bait's gonna be. And that gives it the weight to let it swim through the water and keep it tracking straight through the water, just like the marlin are going to expect their guard to look. Very, very simple, but effective. Now, dead gar, or from our local tackle store. We're going to do position, work out where that hook has to come out so that your rig's going to lie straight. And the idea being that if, if you don't rig these straight, they're going to, they're going to twist in the water and it's exactly what you don't want. We want to have everything sitting straight. The hook has to run dimensionally right down the center of this bait. A good starting point is around the gills. It's often a hard bit of the, the fish there, which will keep the hook together. Thread the hook as far as you can into the fish and make sure that the hook pierces that center line. And then push that hook through to the stage where I can get my bit of wire and push it into the gar. Now I'm ready to, to put a rubber band to keep the nose in place, but you'll, you can see straight away, we have a bait that's rigged all through the center, pinned through the center of the nose, good weight underneath its chin, which will keep it tracking straight in the water, and that's ready to go and swim. All I've got to do is rubber band this. Which 
takes a little bit of coordination, a bit of practice. I'll really be doing it like a champ in no time. And there we have it. Our gar, ready to be put into action. I reckon Swano's getting a bit edgy up there because he's only got one bait in the water at the moment and he wants two. So let's go put this into, into the water, sit it down around our teasers, see if we can G up a marlin. Wow. He had about three goes at that. I teased him up a little bit and he's come back and eaten it. Yeah. Oh, that got us going, mate. We had a little bit of a quiet patch there. Just about to jump over the side, mate. Oh, a bit of a wake getting, up call, and there it is. Getting that way. We've got a long way to go on this fish. He's just sounding his way out deep at the moment. He's not a bad fish, one, eh? Too bad. He's, uh, oh, yeah, isn't that magnificent? You. Isn't that just what you do this for? So very special. Out here with a good mate of mine, Swano. Shall only be named Swano. He's one of the Jarvis Walker boys. And we're ready today putting our mustard hooks to the test because all we're throwing is baits. This is the smaller class of black marlin. So much fun on light spin gear. That's exactly what we're fighting with today stuff we sort of go out there and chase snapper with. We're in there chasing small black marlin. And look at that. <laughs> <laughs> He's all lit up. What a special fish, Swanner. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna have to just follow him around the boat. Thanks, mate, if you can just keep that nose going for me. Look at the colors coming in, that. Oh, isn't yeah. that just brilliant. What a beautiful fish. I don't know why minutes. people like this. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't why why I, I'd much rather be at work today, mate. Yeah. <laughs> rather be looking at a big pile of timber and a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You're fighting fish like this on light spin gear or, or medium weight spin gear. It's a 20 to 40 pound Gary Howard outfit. 20 pound braid. You really just got to use the tackle the way it's designed. Plenty of bend in the rod. Obviously got braid and no stretch line. I don't want to be pointing my rod to bit this fish. I want to just all those jumps and the sudden movements that he's throwing at me, I want them absorbed in this rod. And just be patient. You just gotta look at it as if, if that hook's gonna pull, it's gonna pull, but don't try and help it out by rushing a fish. Right oh, he's not ready to go yet. This is a bit where you want to back off on your drag a little bit. I'm using the Biscayne 50 Threadline Reel, one of the Jarvis Walker products. And it's a smooth drag, which is what you want. You don't want violent drag or, or a, a, a sticky drag at times like this, because that's where tackle comes undone and hooks pull. Wow, look at that, Swano. This is what we came here for. This is what we came here for. Just beak him, mate, and then just once you've had a shot, just hold on. Okay, grab that bill. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well done, and This mate. is what we're going here for. Well done. Fantastic, right on the tide turn. We've worked pretty hard for him today. I don't want to hold this one out of the water for too long. It's such a pretty fish. Later. We'll be kissing later. Not Look telling anyone else that. What stays on fishing trips? <laughs> stays, stays on fishing, on fishing trips. trips. And there you go, there's that little mustard. Well and truly implanted in the corner of the jaw. That's how you want to hook them. And there's the results, mate, getting out there. They're taking some finding, mate, but we've finally got one to the boat. Awesome, fantastic. Well, I don't think it's right to go, eh? Good, strong kick to it. 
All right, let's let him go. Woo, beauty! Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm a happy man. <laughs> I didn't catch it, but I'm just I'm just happy. <laughs> Woo, well done, bro. Catching marlin is a dream of many anglers. However, when the seasons are right, they can be easier to tangle with than you might think. Taking along some medium weight spin gear and a mix of bait techniques will definitely put you in with a good chance of playing with these amazing sport fish. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.